<sighs> this is your lovable widower, Prince DJ, and tensions are still running high. And yes, I could be myself at this time. I don't think the ordinance uh, would not last until this long. It's only 10 to probably 6 or something like that. Whatever. But I think I could be myself about now. Uh, this is really disheartening. I mean, I had to put out the disclaimer. I. If you don't like to hear about the truth of why I'm struggling. If you don't like the fact that I am poor. You don't have to listen to what I'm about to say. Just listen to older podcasts that I've done. And then listen to future podcasts, especially the NFL Pickup. Um, but don't listen to what I have to say. Because this is very disheartening, and I don't feel like an American citizen. I'm feeling less than I'm supposed to be because of my disabilities, and yes, I was born disabled as a birth defect, and because of my status, because I'm in poverty. So, you all know how maybe many people may not be in my particular shoes, but there are people that have just have been pushed out of places. Whether it's through people, whether it's because of ordinance, especially at this past couple of years because of the pandemic, or the big pandemic in the past, pushed out a lot of people. Especially the economy pushed out a lot of people. Pushed out of the job market. Pushed out of homes. I mean, this is really not good. I don't want life in, in a Biden America. I don't want life in a Biden America. And he's trying to run again? He's trying to run again? Really? So, when me and my wife was married, we was married in Springfield, Missouri, I think that was either home to Bob Barker, but he did went to Evangel. There is a street in uh, Springfield, Bob Barker Way, and I haven't actually seen it. It's where uh, the gas station and, and, and it was close to Evangel is. But there is a street in honor of Bob Barker, the late Bob Barker. And I say the tensions run high because we just bit an. I didn't even get through my last day of podcast movement. The last day, the last day of podcast movement. That's when I turned around, got back to the hotel, and I heard about uh, Bray Wyatt, and then also later on uh, by GFP about Terry Funk. And then, turn around. Okay, not after the day that I had uh, supposed to have rest uh, before coming to Galveston. Okay, so I got on the plane, all safe, everything, 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 well, some things are not cool because there's still wheelchair shortage in the, uh, you know, in each airport of the nation, but, I mean, I, I finally came after a 45, 50-minute ride, okay, 45, 50-minute ride to get to Galveston, across the causeway. Had to bring up a heavy bag up the stairs to my unit. Okay. Set everything up. As soon as I set everything up, what's blowing up my, up my phone? What's blowing up my phone? Chief Justice. Chief Justice of Big D Country was the very first. He was the very first to broke the news to me. When I just got here, and this was way before an ordinance was trying to force me out on a place that I didn't even have any money to go anywhere, to go anywhere else, okay? My next step was the uh, the hostel downtown, well, not hostel, but the, uh, the rooming house downtown here in Galveston, 
but it wasn't, but they didn't have the Christian landlord. And it was a shame. I like the, the Christian landlord here. I mean, it was a shame. But I feel like I'm being pushed out. I feel like I'm being pushed out of living. I feel like I'm being pushed out of life. And it's not fair. It's not fair. Why even earlier, when we were trying to play games on GSP, you know, it was still, it's still hot here in, in Houston, Texas. Yes, it's about to be September. Matter of fact, kids in, in Texas are already in school. And I hope to God that they're safe. I hope to God they're safe. Kids in Texas are already back in school. But anyway. So, we was playing, we was trying to play games, and Nick was saying the fan was a distraction, but it's still hot, it's still, like, the, today, a like, couple of days, it will be actual 100 degrees, either actual or feel like 100 degrees. Okay. And I can't stop the, no, I can't pause the, uh, mute the mic, because this record hates me at times. And don't even get a lot of people like when we play Price is Right or Match Game or Hollywood Squares, even though I like to play those games because, you know, well, basically my favorite is Match Game and Hollywood Squares because everybody, uh, everybody can get involved. Price is Right is 50 50 because you have to be picked to play. And, you know, I mean, you know, it's a 50 50 shot on Price is Right. But my favorite to play is Match Game and Hollywood Squares because everybody gets to play. Everybody gets to play. It might not win women money, but everybody gets to play. That's why they're my favorites. But nonetheless, nonetheless, that's not the point of it. That's not the whole point of it. I was uh, trying to survive with the fan on, okay? And Nick wanted me to turn off the fan. It is still hot. It's still hot after... What, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, whatever it was, whatever time it was last night. Okay. I can't turn up the fan. You want me to pass out or worse, you want me to die? Really? If I really have the fan on, oh, yeah. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. And then they finally told it after I had to, conv- I had to convince them that I mean, I keep reminding him that I got sick at Denver Airport because I had to travel during an excessive heat warning, nearly passed out, got sick. I nearly I nearly gave a passenger a heart attack. Yeah, I gave the passenger sitting next to me a heart attack because I was getting sick. I don't do well in the heat. I don't do well in the heat. Okay. There was a funny meme that I saw in, um, in, um, I think it was, uh, the happy hour, I think it was, I thought it was, there was a happy meme, meme where a guy, I guess it was in heaven, and an angel, uh, that, uh, that was going to pearly gates and said, oh, our records indicate that you should be in hell, but since you lived in Texas, um, we're, we're going to count to that time service. And I thought that was funny, and that was appropriate. I thought that was funny. And that was appropriate. Because that's what I'm li- living in right now. I feel like I'm living a literal hell. Yeah. Yeah. But that was a funny meme. And I, and I, and I definitely heard it because I liked it. Because, I mean, it's real significance of what I'm going to. With the heat. Getting sick in the heat. And sure enough, how the hell I'm surviving, I, one will never know. One will never know. Okay. All right, so let's start the history about me getting run out of places. All right. It started out with Springfield. I got ran out of church because of the pandemic. So I used to go to High Street Baptist Church in Springfield, Missouri. They used to have a transportation ministry. So after the pandemic and after the lockdowns, the church stopped the transportation ministry. Okay. Well, guess what? After everything started coming back, people started going to church. I wasn't able to get back to church. Why? 
because they didn't they didn't restart up the transportation ministry. So I couldn't get to High Street. And that was my favorite church. I met my best friend in church. And, you know, he's uh he's my next of kin, my only next of kin. But I mean I would still have the funeral, my funeral, my home going service at High Street. Because I I used to be in High Street. That's the church I used to go to when I was looking for a church after my wife passed. I did. I mean, throw me out of church. Throw me out of church. Throw me out of church. Then things really getting serious. Things really got to get serious after that. So. After the lockdowns, and then after there was still math mandates and all like that, and uh, I mean, Springfield was the worst of not knowing freedoms. It was the worst. So when they kept the math mandate for for almost forever, I thought, you know, I got to go to a place where you know I could go to attractions and stuff like that if I'm able to. So I moved to I I moved to St. Louis. Okay, I was there for like three years, three or four, three years. I didn't make a fourth year because they had a stupid ordinance. And when I when I reported that my pizza was stolen by a driver who never brought my pizza to me, so I reported to the call the police. And then, okay, the police didn't help. But then, my landlord got on my ass. My landlord got on my ass about reporting. And it was the it was the ordinance, and then everybody had the uh, ordinance paper about the uh, the um, you know nuisance ordinance. I I did a podcast on it. I did a podcast rant on the nuisance ordinance, and so it's like, okay, I'm not renewing my lease. I'm going out of town. I'm going out of state. Cause that ran me out. That 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 literally ran me out. But then. Okay, so I kept in the refrigerator to remind me why I got to save money for October so I could... Originally, I wanted to move to Houston in October. But then, something happened. That was another reason why I got ran out. My toilet wasn't working. I am partly blind. I can't see. I can't see to do shit. Okay. So what you supposed to do when there's an emergency and an overnight emergency... Call maintenance. And that's what I did. I called maintenance. That's what I did. You know I was called an asshole for waking him up? And it's called an overnight emergency? I was called an asshole? And I didn't stay in that apartment too long because the maintenance person told the landlord what happened. Then the landlord was on my side and I, then I was... I was, I had to, I had to be like a plea bargain where I was going to go get out at a certain time. I wanted to leave at end of lease because I wasn't going to renew anyway, but they wanted me out. They wanted me out early. So I wanted to be out uh, at a certain day so I could go to a hotel when I wouldn't be on the street, dying on the streets. So then when I went to the couple of hotels, okay. So, then, after I made to, to, to Houston, when I landed May 22nd in Houston, no, when I landed May 3rd in Houston, I moved to a uh, uh, pathway on May 22nd, but when I moved to May 3rd in, H- in Houston, went to a couple of hotels, everything was flying there, and then all the trouble didn't start until I went to Pathway. Okay. And I had a Karen. I was talking like a. I was I was talking to, you know, talking to my friends, talking to the citizens, um, talking to the cabinet of Big D country, playing on GFP. And then the Karen's like, "Oh, you need to stop being too loud. Other people got to go to work. Yada 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 crap, yada crap." And I was like. I know people got to go to work at different times, but you got to understand, game show productions only meet at night. They only meet at night because of people working. 
They only meet at night because of people going to school or yada yada. It seems like they don't understand. They don't freaking understand it. Okay? It's ridiculous. It's really absolutely seen. So, I was trying, I wanted to stay until October and then came here to Galveston where I finally ended up. Okay? But the Karen does the unthinkable and keep playing instead of ding dong ditch, it's knock knock ditch. Whereas keep opening up the uh, knocking on the door, expecting somebody answer, and then probably want to start a confrontation. But every time I go up the uh, door, open the door, just like forgive or forget, there's no one at the door. Means they don't forgive you. I mean, it's really ridiculous. It's got me so to the point that. I, I was going to go to Galveston early. I so I went at the part at the podcast movement. So it brought us right to the present moment, right to the present moment. I just got here, literally, just got here. Already in trouble. Literally just got here. Literally, literally. Haven't even slept my first day. Okay. Oh, you too loud. There's four complaints. We're almost called the cops. There's a noise audience past 10, 10 p.m. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you? I don't think this is, this, I don't think this is America. I really don't. I've been, I've been, I've been pushed out in so many places. It's beyond me. It's either because of ordinance or because of people. I mean, this is, this is not right. I'm trying to survive just like everybody else. This is not right. I am partly blind. If I wasn't partly blind, I probably would have had a lift driver job where the only rules that I follow is the rules and laws of the road. That's about it. But the turnaround, and what if other people are the only places, no, what if, the, what if people were all day, all day, and the only time that they could talk is at night? The only time that they get to talk is past 10 p.m. That's the only time they can talk. That's the only time they can relax. No. Everything must stop at 10 o'clock. Really? We're in almost like a seaside resort. People come here, you know, people that don't live here full time. But people come here to have fun. You know, go to the beach, go to the Pleasure Pier, go to some of the bars or the historic uh, homes in the neighborhood. Uh... See what else we have. We, we like we have different parts. People come to do that, but they 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 they're supposed to have the freedom. We're supposed to be an American. We're supposed to be an American. Not like we're in some damn Russia or damn country that that damn country that don't have no freedom of speech or freedom to do whatever. And then now, just because I'm a have not, it's like they dumping them. Americans don't like homeless, even though it's either not our fault or, you know, lost a job or the house uh, had a fire or apartment had a fire. Different circumstances, it's not always just drugs and, and, and mental illness that people become homeless. But yet, America hates homeless. They hate the homeless. I mean, this is ridiculous. There's no way how the country should act. When there's different ways for people to, that people become homeless. And I said it. I said it. People lose their jobs. Okay. Matter of fact, when I first came here, the landlord told me a person had to move out because they lost their job. Just literally told me. Just literally told me that the person lost their job and had to move out. Just told me. Okay. People's houses burned down. Or apartments. That was another reason why. Or, like, what's what happened now with, with uh, the hurricane over in Florida? As I speak. That's causing people to be homeless. But yet people hate Americans they, they, uh, that are homeless. They keep taking out tents and expect them to just die somewhere. And it's not right. It is literally not fucking right. Not right at all. 
I mean, this is. Uh, I mean, why? 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 And I've been run out of every, almost every place that I'm trying to go. And I'm trying to my damnedest to stay here at Gaps. I am trying my damnedest to say, you know, trying to be at a, uh, a at an island so that I could, uh, you know, not die at the heat. Even though it does get hot, but if it gets to 100, then it's still a problem. It's still a problem. I was just literally out on the balcony yesterday, yesterday morning. Beautiful. Finally felt the ocean breeze from the Gulf. Beautiful. But then later later that, that day, I almost passed out. Almost passed out. And then Nick, Nick, Nick at time didn't want me to have a fan. And then, had, and then I had to tell him and remind him that I don't, I get sick easily with the heat. And I had to convince him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, this is really nuts. I don't feel like an American. I th- all because I'm a half not. I'm in poverty. I don't feel like I'm an American. This is ridiculous. It's wrong. It's wrong. I was born with a damn birth defect, y'all. I lost my wife eight years ago yesterday. And now I'm struggling? Well, if I ever vowed a vow of poverty, I renege that vow right now. I said that I renounce that vow of poverty right now and take it out of my life because I need to be able to live. I need to be able to, 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 I, I can't always even have food. I don't even have enough food. There's never enough room in the refrigerator. I'm not the first one in the house. Just like I was the first in, in Pastor. And the Pastor house had two refrigerators and there was always food. Two. Two, damn it. And it was full. So, it's ridiculous. And I'm going to go. I'm going to go before I can't even put this up on YouTube. Because it's not right. It's not right.